Welcome to my episode of the Kelp Bed, Nicholas. Are you ready to be learned? I'm ready, Professor Wellman. Welcome to the classroom of the Kelp Bed, my man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a, a slightly different platform structure. There we go. Structure. There you go. Yep. Structure. Uh, so, being the history major that I am, and after a few escapades that we did and learned about on this. Uh, I am going to take my teachings and my learnings of school and pass them on to you in a couple episodes here. And me. Yeah, and you. <laughs> <laughs> I was referring to you in the oh, beginning. Oh, okay. okay, my bad. That's all right. To everyone. Yeah. There we go. So uh, being in school for history and the history of history, um, I figured we would push this on into our uh, wonderful platform of the kelp bed yep. and teach some people about some history of certain things around the ocean, around the world, around beaches, stuff like that. Yep. So uh, being what it is, and we're in California, Southern California, we have a lot of history. Um, hence, I've had like <laughs> six or seven full-on classes of Southern California history. That many, really? Yes. Wow. Honestly, yeah. It's a um, lot. The reason it's a lot is because there's a lot of turmoil down here in Southern California because you have yeah. the incoming of Mexico, the Spaniards, the missions, the Native Americans, and then you have colonizers from you know Europe coming over. Um, so that's where we get into, or that's where I kind of want to start on the Channel Islands is one, they're right off our coast, three to four miles off of yep. there. Um, and of the eight islands, they were first originally inhabited by the Chumash Indians, which... Um, if you don't know, around here, you see signs and uh, a lot of homage and a lot of, um, yeah, there's a lot of tribute to the Chumash around here. It, is, it was a heavily impacted area of Native Americans, and Native Americans are still, you know, represented here very well. I mean, um, not just in casinos, but there's a lot of, <laughs> you know, Native American history and culture that still is represented today. Yeah. And we see that a lot within the Channel Islands, uh, which is really cool. And we all started that kind of learning of it, it was like, oh, third or fourth grade? I think so, yeah, Some, uh, somewhere back there. When we were started reading Island of the Blue Dolphins. It's a great book. It is. It's um, based off of a true story, uh, and that was written a very long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it was written in the mid-18, no, late 1800s. Uh, something like that, yeah. Maybe, or maybe it was written about the late 1800s. I can't remember. Uh, after reading it in the fourth grade, I never, <laughs> I never went back to it. I had enough of Island of the Blue 1960. Dolphins. 1960. 1960? 1960. Okay. But it was written about the Chumash, which were there in the early 1800s, um, earlier than that. But that's when they started uh, to dwindle was the 1810s. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Native Americans inhabited the Chumash or the uh, Channel Islands. Those mm -hmm. the Chumash Native Americans. Should we should we go over all the Channel Islands, the names of them all? Yeah, let it rip. So we got San Clemente, Catalina, San Nicolas, Santa Barbara, Anacapa, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, and Santa Mi and San Miguel. Wow. Words. Yeah, you're right. They're hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the, a lot of San and Santas. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's the um, Spanish right. history from there. That's Everything was Spanish or Mexican. Um, so, I mean, that's why we have San Diego and Santa Barbara. And, right. Um, so and that was all the Mexican influence? Uh, Spanish. Or Spanish, sorry. Spanish. Uh, and there's also the missions, too. I mean, wherever you see, I mean, we have the mission of Santa Barbara, the mission of Ventura, the mission of San Diego. Um and I mean, that was the missions were what basically helped form Southern California and California in general, which had a huge impact on the islands themselves. Okay. Um, without the actual missions themselves, um, the landscape of California and the California coast would be drastically different. Right. Uh, I mean, that's how we have the 101 freeway. Right. It, it was literally a road connecting all the missions of yeah. California. Uh -huh. Okay. I remember that. Um, uh, what's the, it's the, um, El Camino Real was the name yeah, of that road originally. Yeah. And you um, still see the signs on the side of the road, right? Yeah, and they're, uh, the, they the still have bells brass or something. Bells. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's an homage to the... Uh, originally, a lot of the bells were actually bells from the missions, mm. and they would just like recycle them uh, and put them out there, but then people were like stealing them and stuff, and they were just like... This. Gotcha. Then they yeah. so started then they, making casts right, and stuff. Right. Um, but anyway, uh, Chumash <laughs> unfortunately got exploited by the missions and the missionaries, which is a very sad story. So at about the 1810s, when colonization started to kick in um, into Southern California, uh, we started to see a big decline in Native American populations just because colonization, they come in. And I mean, unfortunately, the main thing that really affected them was slavery. Uh, you know, a lot of the Chumash mm -hmm. 
and the surrounding uh, Native Americans around the Channel Islands were forced into uh, the missions. And, you know, a lot of people, there's two different sides to the argument of the, the missions and the Spaniards and how they were treated. Um, unfortunately, they were exploited and they were absolutely obliterated. And I mean, the Chumash uprising and uh, a lot of Native American uprising in the missions was, uh, I mean, it happened weekly, daily. Um, it really was a form of slavery. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was awful conditions. I mean, I have had countless sources and countless journal entries and even from missionaries themselves saying the way that they treat these people is terrible. Mm. Um, but where we get a lot of history of the Channel Islands from that is because people would actually go there to try to escape from that. And then two, um, there's actually, uh, documentation of, um, the Spanish and the Mexicans, uh, when they had control over the area and the Channel Islands of sending people and prisoners over to the Channel Islands, because you're about four miles off the coast, Mm -hmm. not too far to the point where you can do a day or two trip out there and drop off supplies. Right. Um, and kind of watch over these people in an essence, kind of like Alcatraz. Okay. So an island where you can't get off. The theory is, is if you put prisoners on an island, they can't get off. Right. 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 Um, our islands of channel islands out here are hellish. They are not well established with, Mm -hmm. you know, enough to survive a small population. At least now. Right. Cause I mean, the Chumash did survive on there, right? They survived on there, but the Chumash did it over hundreds of years. Right. So they had the developed, you know, quote unquote technologies of the time for them mm, or okay. situationally what they had, you know, they had the, you know, they used natural resources such as tar and, uh, woods and, you know, stuff like that to build their own canoes. And I forget the actual word of the canoes and stuff, but, um, they used a lot of that around them. Whereas, you know, you throw Mexican or Spanish prisoners onto right. an island. They know nothing about it. It's going to be a huge problem. Right. Right. Okay. Um, and one of the coolest things that, you know, uh, Chumash, Native Americans established was uh, the understanding of urchins and, and using mm. utilizing urchins and stuff like that around them for ink and spines and stuff right, like that for right. needles. Um, but of course, if you throw someone who doesn't know what they're doing, uh, you know, a prisoner over there, you know, it's just bad. It's, they're going to get, you yeah, know, they don't have the knowledge to survive it. Right. So okay. during this time, they sent about 30 prisoners over there to the Channel Islands and it was um, um, uh, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz sorry. Okay. And that's yep. how we get Prisoner Bay. Uh, oh, okay. Where we roll up and we've been there. We yeah. stop there yeah, almost every time. Yeah. Um, we're going on the boat. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. And that's where a lot of the ferries go now. As you see, it's get the big old long dock and mm-hmm. the, the um, island hoppers go there. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how that got its name was the Prisoner Bay. It was in the 18, I think it was 1830. Uh, mm-hmm. They sent 30 prisoners over there. And I thought that was the coolest thing because it's Crazy. like you hear these little things in, in history and it's you kind of snowball from there. And so one of the things you're taught in history is to find like a word or a phrase, a name, a place and quickly research that, do some of that. So then it was like, okay, well, I'm looking at prisoners. And then that got me into Prisoner Bay. And then it's like, okay, well, now I'm learning how the Spanish and the Mexicans, uh, you know, revolved around that and involved themselves with the islands. And it was, I mean, they had like a semi-peaceful interaction with the Spanish. And it, it passed on from, I have it down here. Um, they passed hands from, uh, where's mine? Uh, Spanish controller from 1769 to 1821. Um, so a good amount of time. And okay. then it went on to the, the Mexicans only for just under, just over 20 years. Just over years. 20 years. Um, and then U.S. taking it over at the end of the Spanish-American or, or the uh, Mexican-American War uh, mm. with the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, mm-hmm. um, ending the Mexican-American War and ultimately giving the United States control over then or now going to be California in two years. So that was 1848, the end of the uh, Mexican-American War. Um, and then 1850 is when the United or the United States claimed California as a state. Okay. Um, so 1850. Gotcha. That was also uh, 1849, as we all know, is the big the gold rush. You know, the 49ers. Right. That's how we get the football. The team. California gold rush. Yeah. yeah. So to give you a time reference of how when all of that really happened and when most of the history of the Channel Islands is going on is right around the gold rush time. Okay. Um, but it's really interesting to note is how different because one. They're, the Channel Islands are, they're an island, they're, they're secluded. Um, thinking about that is 30 years ago, you had Native Americans on there who were surviving with no technology whatsoever. Well, no modern technology such as weapons and firearms and lanterns and stuff like that. Um, and then you go north, you know, 10 years later and you have the gold rush. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, and they're using the most modern technology you can imagine, which is like hydro mining and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And that's only a couple of years later. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how fast technology goes. Um, yeah. So yeah. to put that in a quick little perspective of like 
that actual time frame, what's going on around it right. is just in California alone um, is really interesting to me. And that's why I love our little area of Ventura County is because we have so much history within so many different cultures, right? Because mm-hmm. we've got the colonization of the Europeans, the, I guess the white Europeans coming over uh, informing the United States. Mm-hmm. You've got from the South, you've got the Mexicans, and then you have what's left of the Spanish in the missions program, <laughs> I guess you could call it, um, and then slowly turning that over to the Mexicans. And then you still have native populations going through there. Mm. And then less than 10, 15 years later, you've got the gold rush, which is now introducing as well a huge population of Asian Americans now. Well, Mm, Chinese at the time. So Chinese are now around this exact same time in the 1848, right as the Mexicans uh, turned over or I guess lost, you know, California in the Channel Islands Mm -hmm. to the United States. You had Chinese coming over for the gold rush. So this area here is just littered with history. So I thought that was the coolest thing. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, Going off a crazy tangent there, just to give you an example, of what's no, yeah, going it's, on. it's good to have the the kind of the California history because I, I know the island history is influenced a lot by that. So yeah, and and most of it is. And then now, when you move from you know into the the more modern times, now we're touching almost into the 1900s. Um, it really is an exploitation uh, of goods. Of now, um, it took some time for the United States to, or California, I guess, to kind of utilize or see the islands as either profit or just something there. Mm -hmm. Um, And and we had otters down here, all the way down here, and Mm. um, we lost a lot of, you know, I mean, the pelt trade was a huge impact on this. That had a huge impact on the native community too, on the islands, right? Yeah. So the the pelters or fur traders, whatever you (laughs) want to call them, they were were the ones that that really started to impact those communities on the islands, those native communities. Right, because, I mean, they're relying on an ecosystem, and, you know, you come in here and completely change it. It, It's just, it's, you're going to wipe out something that you've been relying on or not so much seeing as part of your environment that's now affecting a different part of it, and that's just humans altogether. I mean, so So when did they, I know they've found archaeological bones and stuff, ancient humans. How long ago was the first? human t- do they know i think it was like ten thousand year old bones that they found on there okay uh the, anywhere i mean i mean the, i think the estimate was 90 so <laughs> more detail they found bones mm-hmm. this was recently 2005 that they found uh human remains mm-hmm. on was it nicholas or san miguel san miguel they found those remains on san miguel in 2005 um and i mean carbon dating isn't exact it gives mm-hmm. i think it was like a gap of like a thousand years but still, that thousand years was from ninety-two thousand, or well, nine thousand two hundred to ten thousand five hundred years ago, mm-hmm. and they were estimated at forty, fifty years old on the island. So when they died, they were forty to fifty years old. Mm-hmm, oh, correct. Wow. This individual was forty to fifty years old, which you know nowadays is like, wow, that kid's a normal. Yeah, but being. back then that was a pretty big deal. Ten thousand years ago to reach forty, fifty years old, so hmm. something must have been going right on these islands. Interesting. Um, and when looking at that as well, you look at um, the uh, I guess you could just call it sea level. I mean, it was about okay. 150 feet lower. So because of the ice age, was that was that back then? Yeah, when, okay. Uh, ten ten thousand years ago. I uh, I'm not good with that kind of history. Okay, I'm of a modern. Got it. <laughs> modern. I would imagine if the sea level was lower, it was probably because there was, was more a long, ice. Long time ago, there was yeah. more ice. Yeah. So okay. Um, and I mean, if you think about that into context, like today, 150 feet shallower. Yeah. I mean, in some areas, that's probably pushing out a mile at least. At least, yeah, if not more. I know there's there's definitely some some deeper parts of the channel um, getting out there, but yeah, that, that, I mean, even so, that would drastically change the look of the islands. It would probably make the islands all one big island, right? Some of the islands are used to be connected. I mean, that's, So the, the northern four, right, I would you, imagine? If you look at them structurally or geographically yeah. on a map, you can see... Just cut you just looking at them, you could tell that. I mean, if you look at the map of what used to be Pangea, I mm-hmm. guess, or you just look at a map of the world, mm-hmm. you can kind of see it fits like a yeah, puzzle. Yeah, yeah. Islands, are the islands. The islands are the same okay. way. It looks like a little chain and like a interesting. Um, it, it's a cool shape. If you've ever just look up California Channel Islands, and it's it's almost like a mountain range. Like you can tell, at least for the Northern Islands, it, it's kind of like a, a mountain range that looks like it got cut into like yeah, it cut into four pieces. sections. <laughs> and that's what that's what made these islands so harsh. So and they're so inhospitable because it's. You, I mean, like if you look at Anacapa, the one closest to us, I mean, it's right off its, you know, the closest shore to us. I guess you could call it a shore. It's a cliff. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, I, 
I, there's a crane. <laughs> I know researchers have a crane there to get to get stuff, stuff up to the top. Up yeah, to the top yeah. yeah there's the really boat. no there's no like beach on the island. It's all it's all straight cliff to water. Yeah, exactly. But then again, back then, if it was 150 feet lower, that means that cliff is 150 feet higher. On it's higher, but that mean, also means that there's more more beach levels too. Right. They could so, have gone up somewhere. And I mean, if you think about 10,000 years ago, that. I mean, that sea wall could have been drastically different. Right. It could have had more of a gradient to it. And, right. you know, erosion is a natural thing. And over 10,000 years of erosion, mm -hmm. you can imagine. Uh, that's how they found that one body, right? In 2005? Yeah. It was I mean, beach erosion, erosion started to yeah. come down. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, uh, more further back into very ancient history of that. I mean, we have pig, the, the, one of the most famous things of our Channel Islands that most people are like, oh, Channel Islands, the, the pygmy mammoth. Yeah. Uh, I know that's, that's your so favorite crazy. thing. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, so they're literally small Woolly mammoths. mammoths. <laughs> like what? <laughs> and and they, they swam over there, right? Yeah. So they, they originated on the, the mainland and they and they decided to swim over to the islands and then they just flourished. I mean, there's a, uh, is it, were they swimming? Because I know there's a bunch of different theories of like, yeah, well, they got over there and, well, I mean like today, uh, in modern times, we brought over livestock over there. Right. We still have the American bison over there because uh, later on and early on in, um, you know, in our history, uh, mm -hmm. they, they brought over livestock to try and get it, you know, right, to, right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I know I've read, I've read stuff about them swimming over there and then they actually evolved to be smaller because of the, the area that they have to survive is smaller. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. I, I, I think, I mean, I think they were, they were about like human size, right? Like they were relatively, I don't know. They you, were pretty short. And I know you did a lot more studying I, on that part because yeah. you're much more of the biology guy, whereas I'm more of like the people guy. And it's like, oh, what, what kind of battle happened? Yeah. Here, so they, they kind of looked like, uh, kind of like bear size, I guess you'd say, like a, like a big black bear, or brown bear, or whatever. I would like to see that, but I still imagine this thing with tusks and coming at Well, me. they do. They do have tusks. Yeah. As they literally look like a, like a smaller woolly mammoth. Right? So Everybody's seen the, the pictures of regular woolly mammoths. They're like elephant size. Well, yeah, they're bigger than elephants. I mean, yeah. they're way bigger than elephants. So, so I, that's like, why when people were like, when I first heard about pygmy woolly mammoths, I was like, yeah. okay, that's probably just like an elephant because like regular woolly no, mammoths. No, no, they were much smaller. Okay. Yeah. Because I've mean, seen pictures of them standing next to like a human drawing. Oh, like the and, and they're the same height. Yeah. Okay. They're the same height. So, yeah. I mean, it's pretty small compared to their their normal friends so in the did mainland. They, <laughs> did they shrink? I mean, because when you think of adaptation and right. evolution right. did they shrink because they're on an island yeah so that's the theory is that they they swam over and they were probably already kind of adapted to be a little bit smaller yeah i mean um, if you figure where woolly mammoths came from they came from the land bridge up north right alaska russia right over hundreds of thousands of years they're going to be more acclimated to these warmer temperatures as the earth is warming up yeah is the way i'm imagining this yeah so so, so they definitely probably were smaller already but um yeah they they my guess, and from what I was reading, is that they, they became smaller due to their living on the islands. They don't have that much room. They don't have that much resources. So instead right. of lowering their population numbers, they just got smaller. That's, it's that's, kind of crazy. Yeah, it's a weird evolutionary step. It's yeah. just let's get smaller instead of, you know, number small. <laughs> but, I mean, if you think about it, it's like the best way to do it. Like if there's not enough food, just don't get as big. You don't need as yeah. much food. Well, I guess if you look at the current populations of what's on there is Santa Cruz, where you can camp. Mm -hmm. The most common thing you see is these tiny little foxes. Yeah, the foxes are awesome. They're super, super cute, but they're there's so many numbers and they're tiny. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember camping and they stole my eggs once. Mm -hmm. and they literally jumped on the table and the, stole my the eggs. The weird thing about the foxes is that, is that they don't really have that much exposure to humans. Right. They're, they're never hunted. Like, they've never been hunted by humans. So they don't have that, like, instinct of humans are bad. Yeah. Like, they, they don't run from you. They'll actually, like come up and be okay being around you they're not scared yeah exactly um and that's mainly because they really have no natural predators right uh, previously it was the bald eagles that i think were their biggest predator um yeah. but and there's there's still some i mean we know bald eagles are there and there's still some evidence and a lot of i, I was reading through this there's a lot of studies that biologists and ecologists and stuff like that are like estimating and hoping that bald eagles would make their way back over here but they it's just it, they are they're they're coming back so so there used to be a massive population of bald eagles on the island until we had the issues with the uh, ddt contamination Ooh. which is a chemical that they used to use in i think it was the 80s 70s 80s um and basically this chemical would hurt the eggs of the bald eagles so it would actually make the eggs soft, soft. and squishy yeah. um and so they would lose their offspring they would never they would never make it through that stage of the of the cycle so that of course declined the bald eagle population um nowadays i think if i'm not mistaken we're up in to the double digits as far as bald eagles living on the island and i know 
Same thing goes for the foxes. The foxes were down to, I think, 100-ish, and now we're up to like 1,500. Yeah. Something like that. So luckily, we are coming back from it, which is cool. I mean, bald eagles on the island is, is super awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, being able to see bald eagles. And I believe you can even pull up a webcam and, and watch some of the nests Probably. on the islands. Yeah. I think that's a... I'll, I'll look into that and see if I can find it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's super cool. Yeah. I think what's cool, too, is that uh, bison have still managed to... I guess we are providing a huge helping hand. Uh, but I, that's another huge history part of the islands is um, when people saw these islands and how close they were to shore, mm-hmm. um, I mean, landowners immediately bought it up. And, you know, even back to um, the early, when the Mexicans owned it in, in the uh, mid 1800s, people were buying up this land and using it and trying to use it as farmlands. Mm. It just proved that the channel was too harsh and aggressive to get through easily um, and quickly enough to manage a population of any livestock or, you know, farmland out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it just goes to show human nature or not human nature, but modernization and, you know, uh, colonization of, you know, you look at land as a profit and a dollar rather than nowadays it's, it's an NPS, it's a national park. Right. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's still, I think some of them are still, some of the land is still privately owned. Most of it is national park now. I believe. Yeah. I think Santa Cruz has that privately owned. Yeah. Area. Well, and, and, um, um, which one is it? Is a military? It's uh, they use it as military practice as well. <laughs> as uh, a, San Nicholas, I believe. Nicholas, yeah, haha. <laughs> yeah, sucker. <laughs> um, yeah, I believe it's still a military base. Yeah, still and I think uh, San Clemente. Clemente was the bombing practice. Is also yeah, I think they used it for a while there as 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 target a bombing practice. target. Yeah, I mean, which it, is odd. We have down here in Southern California, we have a navy and an air base um and then you've got la is down there la has the biggest harbor Mm -hmm. and then you've got san diego which also has a lot of military you know activity Mm -hmm. it just makes sense that you know a 15 20 minute flight to this well it was also it was also a big defensive position right during world war ii well yeah japan Japan, yeah right it's our pacific fleet of course was known to be in pearl harbor Mm -hmm. um and a lot of ships um stayed out there after pearl harbor but a, a few of them limped back here not particularly us in ventura um but they limped back over here to California. And, and there really was a lot of fear on the West Coast here in California and the islands that Japan would make its way over here. Um, and we still see a lot of a lot of military structures over here. And I think there was, a other than the actual um, airstrip on mm-hmm. um, Nicholas, there's, we still have structures out here, even in Malibu, mm-hmm. uh, of military towers. and, and um, Yeah, that's true, up on uh, the hills and Sky stuff. towers, yeah, yeah, to try and yeah. Uh, scout towers. Um, so... Uh, that brings it into like modern history other than farming is like these were used as strategically of, you know, an early warning sign almost, or like an early stopping ground of possible military invasion. If you think about it, I mean, we're four miles offshore. That's, you know, probably another 15, 20 minutes of an air raid warning that you might have. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, I'm sure they still have. Yeah. I'm sure they still use it as an early warning system for sure. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at the radar towers we have over here by uh, Magoo, it's on the hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're massive. Mm -hmm. So I know they use it as a a research post too. They launch research rockets and stuff from, I think it's Nicholas as well. Yeah. Um, But now into, um, I guess like current times, the the islands are used strictly for like studying. I mean, it's very Mm -hmm. rarely can we actually, I mean, do anything really over there other than just slight recreation and yeah then... so now that it's a it's a uh national park you right. have to have permits and stuff yeah to get onto the island um at santa cruz you can go camping on but i believe you still have to have a permit you have to have a permit and you can only camp on it for just like yosemite you can only camp on it for seven days out of the year yeah so which yeah. uh it's closed down because of current situations but right I mean, uh, more power to him. Close it down. I mean, yeah. I I'm perfectly happy with being able to view it from a distance, you know. And yeah, yeah. Even I mean, even getting onto Santa Cruz is is a mission. Yeah. You know, there's really these islands. You have to kind of think of them kind of like as I think you said earlier, like a like a mountain range, right? So it's they're they're yeah. These islands are are bigger, and they used to be bigger when the water level was lower. So the stuff that's still showing is literally like the tip top of the yeah. mountains. Like they're not very tall. So we're talking like very very tip of the mountains. Yeah. And so they're they're very pointy and straight up and down. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that caused, I mean, we have a huge channel here. And because on the islands, one, themselves, and two, our land as well, being mountains, that helped the history in huge amounts. I mean, mm-hmm. it was such a hard channel. And we've talked about this before uh, to navigate and to provide any form of you know support in between. That's why it became such a problem. And these islands 
are such a haven for small tidbits of history of mm -hmm. whether it be the Chumash, the Spanish, the Mexicans, or even, you know, what should have been modern um, um, livestock and farming it is stuff over there stays over there for a very long amount of time. And that's yeah. why until 2005, we didn't discover that body uh, mm -hmm. or the ancient, uh, you know, remains mm -hmm. uh, is just because there's no, you can't do much over there. And I think that's for archaeologists, biologists, it's a huge, huge opportunity, and that's why we're studying over there so much. Yeah. And I think we're only going to see an increase of possible history and, you know, technology, or not technologies, <laughs> histories and sources. I mean, mm -hmm. um, coming out of there, you know, modern history, like I said, because it's so hard to get over, there's not so much history of surrounding the islands as there is just the interchange in between them that it caused. Um, so, I mean, the, the missions that we had here, the Ventura mission, the Santa Barbara mission, I mean, we have the, one of the islands is Santa Barbara Island, so it's right. um, it's they had interactions between, and um, a lot of the sailing ships and a lot of the uh, restock ships, as you could easily call them, um, a lot of them ended up being slave ships. Uh, they would come in and they would know the islands as okay, cool, we're going to go into shore, and it's a very easy way to see and understand and navigate a shore is with islands, right? If you're going in a channel, think about it. You know, this is going to be the safest place you think you're going to be. And that's the easiest way for, you know, you can, from Santa Barbara uh, Mission, you can see the coast. Mm -hmm. So Santa Barbara Missions is one of the most iconic missions because it was one of the larger ones. Um, and unfortunately, they, you know, slaves were all in this area. So we had a lot of slave ships. We had a lot of um, European influences here. And there was a, a lot of, one, Spanish, and two, there's actually Dutch that came out here. So mm -hmm. it was pretty cool and interesting to read about. Unfortunate circumstances, but I mean... I, I I wish I could go back and help, but we can't, you know, it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's definitely the, the history of this area is very, it seems like it's very back and forth. It's a lot of, a lot of different regions that are kind of coming through here and, and yeah. leaving their impact. It's really harsh and it's a harsh environment. So one thing you have to understand about Southern California is we are a coastal desert. Right. Um, so any population out here let's take just for example the Chumash mm -hmm. surviving out here for thousands of years off the land is profoundly impressive and beyond you know you know I, I just flabbergasted me right yeah, I, yeah. You know, it, it floors you because it's like right. you, you walk out into these mountains and it's like there's nothing right and it's you know I think that's a, a testament to the Chumash to the missions to the Spanish to the Mexicans who came out here the rancheros to set up ranches and to mm -hmm. set up um, settlements and be like, I'm going to make it out here. Mm -hmm. Right. That's such a cool part to me. And that's what makes, I love studying about California, Southern California and hearing about all these small things. I mean, even recently we've had, um, Chicano, uh, in the seventies, they were out there, um, at a Catalina and stuff like that and making a Chicano uprising and, you know, voice for themselves. Cause Chicano farmers here in Southern California were, you know, unbelievably treated terribly mm -hmm. and this was in the 70s and 80s and this was and earlier than that and this is the 50s through like the 80s the chicano uh, culture down here is massively impressive and it's there's so much culture in this area and this is like i guess modern history the chumash made their way even to onto alcatraz island to make a, a point for themselves and to voice for themselves and it's you know if you have any time to look in um start in modern history and chicano is i keep saying that word because it's so Without that in Southern California, we would have almost no culture, right? I mm. mean, the Spanish and Mexican influence in Southern California is what makes you, yeah, right? Or not makes us, you know. Without yeah. it, we would be a completely different society down here. Um, and I love that because it's you can go and see the mission and, and see just if you look at just architecture. I mean, it's our buildings down here are beautiful, and you can see that, uh, you know throughout all of it. You know, it's even in the modern homes that they're making today, they yeah. take such a huge influence from that Spanish influential. Yeah, and that, that's the been Spanish culture. And that's been back yeah. since the 1700s, you yeah. know, and, and I love seeing that. And then you just see that straight, uh, even onto Catalina Island, you can just see that it's, mm -hmm. you roll into the harbor and it's like, whoa, dang. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. So that's a weird experience. It, Getting going into, into Catalina. Uh, yeah. I, it, I had never gone over there as a kid and, and going over there, I think for the first time to go See, diving. diving. Yeah. Um, that's, that's weird. What it's, is, it's odd. The bay right there in the, um, Avalon uh, casino point or yeah. Avalon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah. it's a little city. I it, mean, it's, it is a little city, but they don't have cars. They have go, go uh, cart or, uh, uh, golf carts. Golf carts. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So yeah. now yeah. into like current times, what the islands are good for, I guess is 
the Channel Islands, the most famous one is Catalina Island. Mm -hmm. And it's a little city. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's basically a retirement home on there, right? But yeah, it kind of seems like Just like, like it. kind of built into the hillside. Um, and you have the one big structure that's like right on the... Um, Right on the harbor. I don't even know what it is. I, I mean, I've been to the island. The Catalina. Um, it's it's called Casino Point, right? So yeah, I would you assume. Talk about that round building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good good question. It has, you know, it's just an interesting structure. But uh, that's what it's become today. Is now it's just a tourist attraction as Catalina. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's unfortunate, but I mean, I guess it pulls business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is that called? <laughs> uh, it's called Casino. Casino point. I don't know. Yeah. I'm assuming casino. Maybe, maybe it was a casino. Actually, casino. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll have to look into it. Yeah, but I mean, anyway, that's that's the modern history of it now, and, and I love to see now the your side, your guys' side, the biology side. Yeah, the biology side of things is is awesome because, like how I was saying, the islands are so well. They were protected and they were not protected. You had a lot of a lot of influence from. Um, the fur traders, you had a lot of influence from the whalers out here hunting fishermen whales. Too. Um, I mean, uh, fishermen, yep. The history of fishermen out here is when, when kind of modern humans, when I'm assuming the Spanish or whatever came over here, they, they definitely impacted the marine life around the, around there because it was so strong. Like it's, there was, there was so many species and so much life over there because it had never been touched before. It was, it was fresh. And even to this day, I mean, if you compare the the structures and the life off the coast compared to the life and stuff at the islands, I, there's a drastic change between between just the wildlife that lives here on the coast and the wildlife that lives out there. Um, so yeah, so as far as biological stuff goes, it's it's pretty interesting. It's even the land animals, like I was talking about with the foxes and the bald eagles, like, that's just super interesting stuff as far as population grows. Like looking at that as a as a specific study, studying the the miniature foxes and the miniature pygmy mammoths and stuff like that. That's that's, that's something that you can't find anywhere else. No. And it's uh, one thing, I mean, it's unfortunate to say, but, you know, in our community down here, fishing is huge. And mm -hmm. it, unfortunately, I mean, it almost decimated our islands over here. I mean, oh, yeah. we had, we've got the two big sea bass, black sea bass and white sea bass. Yeah. And black sea bass were almost fished to extinction because yep. it's this big slow moving massive beast mm -hmm. that's just hundreds of pounds of meat right and it's unfortunate to say you know without that you know this community in this you know ventura county probably wouldn't have survived i mean that's part of its history yeah it's, it's a big part of the history i mean that wasn't even that long ago either no that was in the early i mean that was what 1910s 1920s 30s the sea bass, Black yeah. sea bass? no that was later than that it was 70s 80s really yeah i didn't know that yeah yeah yeah, it's that was that was a big one, but um, I think the biggest one is the otters. I, the fur trade out here just yeah. decimated the otter population, and I think actually we're going to get a little bit more into depth on that, and yeah. probably I think the next episode, maybe the one after that, we'll we'll look into that. Otters are, I mean, anyone who lives in California, otters are a huge, yeah, cool thing. Yeah, but but the whole the whole endangered species otters, um, and and the impact that they have now. Yeah. On, on the state. I know we've talked about it before with the kelp and the urchins and stuff. So yeah. it's a super interesting topic that I definitely want to get more into. Yeah, um, and I definitely want to talk more about the history. And it's it's hard. I don't know. It, it was hard to... It's hard to summarize our area of history with the Channel Islands down here in Southern California and, and try and stay positive about it. It yeah. was a lot of... It was a lot of gore, a lot of battles. It's a lot of... It seems like that's how conflict. history is in general. Yeah, it, it <laughs> really is. I mean, the major history really is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, trying to remain peachy about it, I guess, and kind of, like I said, positive is, you know, but if that's something you guys are interested, let us know, and I will definitely give you a full episode of yeah, I, I definitely, down here. I definitely think getting into these these little uh, kind of offshoot episodes um, with you kind of jumping into the history of stuff, I think is, is going to be very interesting. I know I want to do a, a specific one where I get into more depth on one specific species or one specific type of animal um, and kind of really go into depth on that one animal, because I feel like our normal episodes, we kind of it's it's a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time and so we kind of have to gloss over certain stuff that yeah. that I don't want to gloss over so i think these little these little offshoots will be quite interesting i'm, Yo, I'm yeah, really definitely. looking forward to to getting more information on on specific stuff i know we've talked about the the galapagos islands and the history of those and there's a lot of history of those. Yeah. I mean, that's that's huge. And I think we, we still want to do a good episode on invasive species, but we just want to do more positive research about that and yeah. get that. Yeah, invasive species are, are tough. Um, I will get into it again with that otter episode, but the the 
the amount of invasive species and their impact is it's kind of like a snowball effect. Like you start with one thing and all of a sudden you're talking about 20 different species that are all engulfed into this, this topic of endangered species. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, cool. that, that was, that was fun, Kyle. Thank you for the information on the, yeah, it was on the really, channel islands. It's like a really, really rough, you That's know, okay. <laughs> it's That's like okay. a, here's well, a little bit Like history. you said, like you said, there's so much that it's, it's hard to yeah, it's, narrow it down to just specifically the channel islands history. It's more of like a it's Southern California, Southern California, yeah. California thing that you kind of have to take all that influence from yeah. everywhere. Cause I mean, they're literally right off the coast. So, so yeah. all that influence from California is really going to affect the islands. And so you kind of got to throw that all in there as well. Yeah. But and, I mean, you guys get any opportunity, please just do a quick little like history of Southern California. And it's like yeah. the amount of stuff in this area. I mean, just starting from, I mean, as early as the 1500s, I mean, is insane. Mm -hmm. It's insane that when the Spanish first came over here, it's just insane. So definitely something that I would, I could spend hours on and probably blow your guys' minds <laughs> and pull out some sources and some primary documents that you guys would just be like, <laughs> okay all right calm down there kyle boy like <laughs> four hour episode incoming <laughs> yeah no it's yeah it's really really interesting to me because that's history and it's yeah. but to a lot of people i mean that's the reason i want to be a history teacher right is because it, i get jazzed about that right and yeah i use like an old man term i just said i got jazzed about history <laughs> but it's i mean i could go on to it but i also don't want to uh, offset anyone and it's like because it's you know yeah I i'm think not proud of a lot of the history around here but i'm very proud of our community I think everybody has to remember that it is history. Like it's already been done and all you're going to be doing is reciting what has already been done. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that people need to remember when it comes to history is it's already happened. It's nothing we can do now can change that. Other than to teach it, yeah. learn from it. And, and not make the same mistakes again. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, everyone's, <laughs> what, do, what do we do with history? Learn from your mistakes. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, that's going great. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, thanks, Kyle. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, look forward to more history of with Professor Kyle Wellman. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, we will see you guys in two weeks. Uh, make sure, like, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, leave us a comment. Give us um, a rating on Stitcher, Stitcher Premium, uh, iTunes, everywhere. Apple Podcasts. Give us a rating. Yeah. Give please. us a little comment. Tell um, us how we're doing because we love to hear it and we love to see it. Yes, we do. With that, uh, happy new year, everybody. Oh, uh, it's yeah. now 2021. I, wow, I forgot. I know. <laughs> we we did that last episode, You just too. said it's 2020. I said 2021, didn't oh, I? I you said 2020. I might have. I don't know. Wow. It's still 2020 now. When this comes out, it'll be 2021. So yeah. happy new year. Uh, happy new year. <laughs> oh, man. We're oh, time traveling God. now. It's um, crazy to think this year is over. Yeah. Cool. But well, hope everybody has a good year. with us. for This is our first full year. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. Yes, sir. Alrighty. <laughs> All, right, All guys. right, guys. Thank you. See you guys in two weeks.